Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hey, welcome back to the MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm here with Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro, and we're going into a little bit about auditions, right? Right. Audition clips have been in Final Cut Pro 10 since the beginning, and uh, what's unique about them is that you essentially create a container for multiple clips that you can quickly cycle through. For example, you want to change out uh, the same shot with different color correction or maybe try different shots. Yeah. Um, it's it's essentially Final Cut Pro's answer to stacking clips in a Instead timeline. of stacking them all up, they're all contained in one container yeah. and you can just flip between them. And Yes, it's, it's, yeah, it's really a great feature. I was at uh, Hulu last week and they just like were blown away how cool that was. And they're going to, we're going to use that for music, we're going to use it for all this great right. stuff. I use it for sound effects a lot. Yeah. A whole bunch of different options into a, an audition. So what are we right. talking? So, we've talked about them before already. No, right? we, we've talked about them, but there's there's one little bugaboo with, uh, with them that, you know, I'm it requires a little bit of a workaround, um, and you'll, you'll see. Let me just okay. go into it. Okay. So here's this clip. Uh, this helicopter. This is uh, those of you who uh, have purchased our tutorial are probably familiar with this uh, this material. This is uh, Mitch Keldoff and his helicopter, the Saber Cat. Now, if I play this, I mean, I, actually, let me go ahead. Just to, I'm just going to bring the audio down a little bit. If I play this, it's basically a lift off clip um, of him taking off into the ether. Okay. Now, what I want to do is add a couple of versions of this takeoff, and because I'm not sure if I want to use this. Maybe I want to use another takeoff shot. So you've got multiple shots of him taking off. Exactly. So you can see here, here's, a, here's another example of him okay. taking off. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that little, oh, it's already pre-selected, so I'm going to just drop it down. You've got a range already yeah. set on it. Yeah, just drop it, and I'll just choose um, replace and add to audition. And as uh, soon as I do that, you'll notice the timeline. Right, because it accommodates the it accommodates a different length, because you can audition clips that have different durations. Yeah, and that may or may not be a problem. And I, it's changing the timing of my projects, moving them right. down. So I want to talk about you know how to get around that. I see, okay. okay. So um, let me add one more uh, audition clip, just, just another one, just so you can see we have clips of varying length. Here's another one. I'll go ahead and just grab that and drop that onto the audition clip. And I'll just go ahead, this time, let's just say, add to audition. Okay. Now, of course, if you click the badge, you can uh, you can cycle through them. You're just right? tapping the arrow just keys to try different ones. Exactly. And the length changes each time, and everything moves to accommodate it. And nothing gets put out of sync because no. of the magnetic timeline, right? You've got connected clips that stay in respect to each other. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. sometimes you might not want, you've got a duration, you know you've got a 30-second spot or something, and you don't want it to change. Right. I want this duration. I want to maintain the duration of the original clip, which was this one. Okay. So, by the way, keyboard shortcuts, control, option, uh, left arrow, right arrow, allow you to cycle through um, without, without having that. to open up the audition a window every time, which gets an, gets tiring after a while. You know, I, I find just the keyboard shortcuts yeah. faster. So, so I have this issue where I want to, I don't want to affect the timing, but I want to say maybe use that clip. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is select the clip and hit Command Option Up Arrow. Lift from primary storyline. That is called a lift from primary okay. storyline. So we could do the same thing: Control Option Left Arrow Right Arrow, and you know we certainly can see it's now it's no longer affecting the clips to the right of it. Yep. But it's not really helping me because if I skim through it, I don't want that length of clip because it's yeah, covering the mid-interview. It's covering the next clip. So the whole duration didn't change, but you are now cutting into the next clip. Right. So here's my workaround. And by the way, this is a thanks to Nathan at Hulu who uh, who showed me this. He goes, oh, oh cool. you can do this. And I, that's great. And yeah. again, he's already thinking how the magnetic timeline and the primary storyline works. All I need to do to resolve this is take the clip yep. and I'll hold down the shift key and just drag this clip straight down and it keeps the shift key maintains it's um it's a oops let me do this again and the, when i drag it i don't want it slipping right or left, left. Right. so yeah. i hold down the shift key and what yeah. it does is it main, makes it maintains that that clip is actually where it's supposed to be so it doesn't move left or right so what's okay. nice about this notice i have a longer clip but the gap clip is determining the duration here so the while the gap clip there is actually peeking down and revealing the clip that's connecting below yes. it yes so the, the takeaway here is you can connect video clips below the primary storyline, and if they're below a gap, the gap becomes a somewhat of this window oh, now. I to see them, yeah. So I, I still get my duration. So I can I can sit here and I can change the uh, the container, the clip inside it by pressing Command Option Arrow, and and I can use whatever clip I want. It's not going to affect timing, and I'm only going to see. That clip for the original duration. duration. Right. And then if you wanted to see a different portion of that clip, you could drag that clip left to see a different section. In if fact, you just want to see the end of that it's clip. It's so funny that you're saying that. Yes, you could say, I want to see maybe this clip a little, this portion of the clip. So you're only seeing from here to here. And really what you've just done is you set up 
a slip edit. Yes. That's, that's really slip what edit. a yep. slip edit does, yep. except you're putting the content it's below the gap. It's kind of a good illustration of what a slip edit does. Absolutely. Or if you did want to see that entire clip in that short window, you could retime the clip and shrink it down to fit in that gap you after, after the fact. You certainly could retime it. But I, I thought this was a really great tip yeah. for being able to work with an audition clip and not affect the timing and still maintain the original duration of your clip. So you kind of, you can do whichever you want. You can work with the magnetic timeline such that it will keep everything in sync but the overall duration will change, but you can always find another way to do something. There's always another way. Great. Exactly. Very, very cool. Great tip, Steve. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. And uh, if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro Motion, DaVinci Resolve, related applications, plugins for Final Cut Pro 10, check us out at rippletraining.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And we'll see you again on the next, on the next MacBreak Studio.